morning and welcome to all of you who are here to worship with us uh, this morning. Not too many announcements, uh, just want to remind everyone uh, that we have our Christmas Eve candlelight uh, service tomorrow, one at five and again uh, at seven. We also have our Christmas Day service Tuesday uh, at 10 o'clock, uh, so I encourage you, uh, you who will be here uh, to come. And uh, also in your bulletin you'll see that we do have the New Year's Eve Divine Service. Uh, this will be on Monday, December 31st. Uh, so again, if you're going to be in town and not traveling, uh, please join us. It's great to hear the gospel of Christ at this wonderful time of year. Today's service is a service of the Lord's Supper. We believe that this presupposes the unity of oneness and belief. If you are a member of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod in good standing, we invite you to receive the Lord's Supper with us today. Uh, if not, we ask for the opportunity first to teach about our confession, uh, that this is, in fact, Christ's true body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. Uh, you can speak with one of the pastors about that. Those are all the announcements we have today, so we now begin with our opening hymn. <laughs> the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. In this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Advent is from Deuteronomy chapter 18. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. 
just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words, that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. The epistles from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. This is a testimony of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. And they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for the sermon this day is taken from the prophet Isaiah, the 45th chapter, verse 8. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. This is the text. Let us pray. O Savior, rend the heavens wide. Come down, come down with mighty stride. Unlock the gates, the doors break down, and bar the way to heaven's crown. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the prophet Isaiah is often referred to as the Christmas prophet. And I think the title of Christmas prophet is well deserved. After all, it was the prophet Isaiah who said, The Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. It was Isaiah who said, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And it was Isaiah who said, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. All of Isaiah's prophecies given to proclaim the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. The readings from the prophet Isaiah show up often during the very short Christmas season. We hear from Isaiah on Christmas Eve, again on Christmas midnight, if you choose the readings that night, and also the first Sunday in Christmas. Who among us could imagine Christmas time without hearing from Isaiah the prophet? I think that then Isaiah has earned the title of Christmas prophet. But I would also like to suggest to you on this fourth Sunday in Advent, that we might also refer to Isaiah as the Advent prophet. Listen to one of Isaiah's Advent sermons. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. It's the prophet Isaiah who gets real with sin in Advent. There's no mistaking it. In the words of Isaiah, sin is a messy business. In order to defeat sin, for Isaiah, a full-blown, all-out war must be waged against it. And it's a war that only one can fight. And that is the one in whom Isaiah hopes, the one who gives Isaiah the prophecies, the very Messiah the one of whom Isaiah hoped in to come, and who has come. Isaiah preached it, that God alone must do battle for sinners, that God alone must do battle for you and for me. For Isaiah, there's, there's no other way around it. Only the Messiah can do it. And when the enemy has been beaten back and defeated, Vanquished. Isaiah paints this picture of the Messiah himself 
running out to all of his imprisoned people, all of those burdened by sin and darkness and the troubles of this world, and the Messiah himself releasing them from the stronghold of hell and the pangs of death. And then as each one is released, as you are released from your sin, you hear the sweet song of the Messiah in your ear. Comfort, comfort, ye my people. The church that you and me, we hear from the prophet Isaiah three out of the four Sundays in Advent. And I think what's remarkable is this Sunday, you've already heard from the prophet Isaiah twice, two times on this fourth Sunday in Advent. It should be noted that this Sunday has not always been referred to as the fourth Sunday in Advent, although it is the fourth Sunday in Advent. We can say that the historic name for this Sunday is Rorate Chaley. Rorate Chaley. That's kind of fun to say, I think. These are the words of our introit that Pastor Welmer sang for us earlier. And if you've paid attention to the front cover of your bulletin, you'll also notice that strange little phrase printed there. Rorate Chaley. Rorate Chaley is a little Latin phrase. And it means, oh, shower, oh, heavens. Shower, oh, heavens. Rorate Chaley. And yes, it's taken from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 8, where it is written, Shower, O heavens, Rorate Chaley, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. Interesting. Rorate Chaley. When you look at the broader context of the 45th chapter of Isaiah, there's some more intriguing things that we hear and see from the prophet. In Isaiah 45, the Lord himself, the Messiah, speaks to Cyrus II, the king of Persia. It was the king of it was King Cyrus whom the Lord would use to defeat the wicked Babylonians in the year 539 B.C. You see, it was the Babylonians who held God's people captive in the days when Isaiah was prophesying. And through the prophet Isaiah, the Lord himself said that they would no longer be captives to the wicked Babylonians, that the Lord himself would come down, that he would be their redemption through one named Cyrus. And the Lord promised to Cyrus that he himself would go before him. And as he would go before Cyrus, he told him that he would level the exalted places he said that the Lord will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. That's what Isaiah wrote. That's what the Lord said. And then in Isaiah 45 verse 4, Isaiah writes a strange thing. He said, I, the Lord, call you by your name. Cyrus, I name you, though you do not know me. Interesting, isn't it? Cyrus II couldn't have known the Lord when Isaiah made this prophecy. Why? Because Cyrus wasn't even born yet. That's why. Nevertheless, the Lord would redeem his people through this Cyrus II and through his reign. 
almost 200 years after Isaiah wrote Rorate Chele. Isaiah calls the Persian Cyrus the Lord's anointed. Cyrus is called the Lord's shepherd. More than simply rain showers, because that's the picture we get, rain down, shower down from heaven, right? But more than just a picture of a passing rain, the Lord says that he will shower down righteousness. Why? So that salvation and redemption would visit his people. That's why. In other words, the Lord would act in history through an unknown, an unborn, foreign king. And in doing so, God's people would be saved. And Isaiah the prophet is the one who announced it to those held in captivity. That's the first time we hear of Isaiah this morning. But there's another time, too. We heard of him in the reading of the Gospel of St. John, the first chapter. There, John the Baptist said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. You see, the voice in the desert, he was John the Baptist. John said that he was not the Christ. That's because people thought that he was. He wasn't Elijah incarnate either. Some thought maybe he was him. No, he wasn't the greater prophet either, the one of which Moses prophesied. John was, as Isaiah said he was to be. John was a voice, a preaching prophet. And in John chapter 1, when the priests and the Levites came and they were pressing against John, pressing against John to give an answer to why in the world he was baptizing if he wasn't the Christ, nor the prophet, nor Elijah, John simply said, I baptize with water, but among you stands one that you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. Isaiah said that John the Baptist would be a voice. And that voice came into the world and prophesied, Behold, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John would point to Jesus. Even more so, we see that John, in the Gospel of John, points to Jesus' baptism as the greater baptism, let's say, the greatest baptism. John said, I saw the Spirit of the Lord descend from heaven like a dove, And it remained on him. And I have seen, John says, and I have borne witness that this one is the Son of God. Isaiah the prophet, twice in the same Sunday. At the end of the day, then, what should we say about the preaching of Isaiah today? Is it simply that Isaiah prophesied of Cyrus, prophesied of John the Baptist long before either one of them came along? Well, I think we'd miss the point if that's all we got out of Isaiah this morning. Rather, we should hear in Isaiah as the one 
who years before the Lord Jesus Christ came, that Isaiah prophesied of him, the Christ, the Son of God. It was Isaiah then who preached, the Lord is our righteousness. And in him, we hear not only Isaiah from ages past, but the ever living active word of God Isaiah's words are fresh and new and active and alive for you and for me and for the world today. For surely it is true that much more than Cyrus's redemption that he brought about through war and bloodshed, that our Lord Jesus Christ came and conquered the world. He conquered sin and Satan. And all of your enemies, even the enemy that wages war within yourself, your brokenness, your sadness, your troubles, this Jesus came for you, and he has done battle for you. He didn't do it with a mighty Persian war plan, but rather with his holy, precious blood and his innocent sufferings and death. Much, much worse than the Babylonian captivity, Isaiah himself, John, you, me, all troubled by sin, bound by death, even encircled by Satan himself, unrighteous, and yet Isaiah proclaims to you and to me that in the Messiah, shower down, O heavens, bring righteousness to us. And he has. Jesus Christ has redeemed you. It is true. The Lord is your righteousness. If Isaiah's words stood for 200 years and came true in the one called Cyrus, how much more then is Jesus the very word made flesh? That word is truth incarnate. And that word, it endures forever. Because you see, the pre-incarnate Christ, that was and is the very word that Isaiah preached. John the Baptist wasn't worthy to untie the sandal of Jesus. But the truth is, neither was Isaiah. And neither are you. Jesus is the one and him alone of whom angels and archangels the prophet Isaiah, John the Baptist, indeed the whole church sings. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Rorate Chele. Shower, O heavens, from above. Let the clouds rain down righteousness upon you and upon me. Jesus has showered down his righteousness on you. You've been showered in holy baptism. Jesus' baptism fulfilled all righteousness for you in his baptism. So that all of you who are also baptized into Christ are also Righteous heirs of heaven. Rorate Chele. Shower, O heavens, and rain down righteousness so that our hearts are prepared to receive Jesus in the breaking of the bread and again in his final advent. Rorate Chele. Shower, O heavens, and like John the Baptist, open our lips, not to deny, but to confess Jesus 
the coming one. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God, which truly surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us rise for the prayer of the church. In addition to the prayers uh, printed in the bulletin, we also pray uh, for Bill Kuneman, uh, who's on hospice care. Uh, this is Barbara Denke's father. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you inspired the apostles to proclaim your gospel and to record your truth in Holy Scripture. Through that life-giving word, Preserve and extend your kingdom of grace, and by the gift of your spirit, continue to lead those who hear your word, to repent of their sins, be baptized, and in the name of Jesus Christ, receive full forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you resist the proud and give grace to the humble. Grant us true humility after the likeness of your only Son, that we may never be arrogant and prideful, and thus provoke your wrath but in all lowliness be made partakers of the gifts of your grace. Teach us to love you above all things, 
and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of the Church, bless Stephen, David, and Brennick as they prepare to serve within your kingdom. Give them sound training in your word and a caring heart for the needs of your people. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, grant your blessing to Roy Askins and Michael Wildauer as they serve as missionaries within your kingdom. Guide, protect, and uphold them. Grant that all who hear your word may receive the gift of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Heavenly Father, hear our prayer on behalf of the young adults in our congregation who attend college or who are employed. Protect and guide them. Let your word dwell richly in them. Nurture the faith given them in baptism and strengthen them by your holy supper. Grant them wisdom to discern what is false and to hold on to what is true. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord, look down from heaven. Behold, visit, and help your servants for whom we pray, especially for Bob, Heidi, and Christy who are recovering at home. Look upon them with the eyes of your mercy and give them comfort and sure confidence in you. Defend them from every danger to body and soul and keep them in peace and safety. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Eternal Father, we ask you to show your mercy to your servant, Bill Kuneman who is on hospice care. Keep him in his baptismal grace. Give him a repentant heart, firm faith, and a lively hope. At your chosen time, grant him a peaceful departure and a joyous entrance into everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O Lord our God, make us ready to receive the most holy body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of all our sins. And grant us grateful hearts that we may give thanks to you. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have forgiven us, you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.